Hey team, it's been a while. Four months ago, Leva and I bought a vintage Bigfoot travel trailer, and our hope was to make that our next adventure vehicle. After purchasing it and trying to make it work as is, we realized that there was a lot more problems and mold than we bargained for. Oh, shit. So we were forced to gut our trailer and take absolutely everything out of it, and we were feeling pretty good about that process. And then, we had a baby. This is Frankie. <laughs> he, and he is very milk drunk right now. <laughs> so yeah, we were thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours into this build when suddenly everything came screeching to a halt. But right before we brought our little bundle of joy into the world, um, we had to get one crucial inspection done. So today is kind of a exciting but nerve-wracking day because we are going to take the trailer to a guy in town who is a fiberglass specialist. He's basically going to tell us whether she's worth it or if we bought a hunk of junk. Levi, how are you feeling about this? Um, I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> oh no. Probably about good there. Who used it as kind of a work trailer when he was out in the field, you know, like doing logging jobs and stuff like that. But he sold it to me for four grand. Um, so I, I, I figured it was worth kind of the risk if I could make it work. Um, but I don't know, it, as you'll see in the inside, the roof has sagged in. We stripped it out to kind of give you a better look at what's going on. Seen worse. Believe it, really? Yeah. Well, that's good. This thing sell for like twenty plus thousand dollars when you're in really good shape. Yeah, which this thing will never be in really good shape again unless we put ten grand into it, probably, or something like that. Which is what we're willing to do. You know, it's just a project. Like I work at a computer all day, so I'm trying to learn something about what my yeah, dad no. did for his whole life. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, do you think we'd just have to get the whole gel coat redone? No. No? No, I would just fix the inside and leave it. Just leave the outside? Yeah. Yeah. Spend the money, make the inside really nice, and then use it, and pick on the outside a little bit at a time, instead of putting all your eggs. You're opening yeah. up too many jobs. Right. Dude, that so far it is going so much better than I was expecting. Like I really thought, I thought he was gonna look at it and go, "Oh man, this is this is trash. You've got nothing here." No, he's like, actually, this is in really good shape. Yeah, like he, he seems to think that we should just leave the outside too and just focus on the inside. Yeah. Fix especially this piece right there where the fiberglass is showing. Yeah, James. James is a busy guy, and he runs a fiberglass business, and he's like. No, don't mess with it. Like, like he's he, this could be, you know, like a thousands of dollars job. And he's like, no, you don't, don't even bother. I mean, I guess he's doing okay. Yeah, it must be. It's so generous of him too, to like take the time to like talk to us about this. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, it just cut, oh, so this is all just, so you don't want to get too crazy and you never do circles. Never do circles, okay. A little show when you're trying to polish it. But I'm being pretty aggressive right now. Hello gang, a uh, quick update here. In the making of this video, we have made the decision that uh, we are not going to be committing to weekly videos anymore. It's a bit of a lot between <laughs> filming them and also looking after Frankie. So we're trying to give ourselves a bit more grace, a bit more time uh, to make the kind of content yeah. that we want to share with you. So we will be updating our other social medias like our Instagram and whatnot. Our Patreon page is going to be active as well where we will be posting um, Patreon podcasts and uh, exclusive videos over there. So if you want to support 
our channel while we sort of figure out this next chapter. Uh, you can go over to those places and keep up to date there. But otherwise, look forward to content still coming out on this challenge, mm -hmm. maybe not quite as regularly. Back to the video! <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs>Oh my lord, I wow. feel like I feel like James just saved <laughs> our lives. Like the amount of hours we've already put into it and it still looks like that. When he started buffing out the side, like Dude. he's I was like, that looks like a like new fiberglass, like a new trailer. And the guy literally out of he's like stops his day of work to come over and like show us some like basic tips on how to polish up the fiberglass. He tells us a great tip on like how to build the braces for the yeah. inside and everything. James at Extreme Fiberglass in Nanaimo is an absolute G. That was yeah. so, so cool and so helpful and I feel so much better right now. <gasps> and like he said, he's like, look, you could send it in and like I could do the whole thing. It'll cost you eight grand, but you can do it. You're gonna learn a whole bunch. And what he basically said was, you're gonna fix this up real nice. It's gonna look like a million bucks and you're gonna get way more money back for this thing if you yeah. decide to sell it. And I was yeah. like, ooh. Yeah, dude, he absolutely hooked what? it up. Oh my God, that's so huge. We didn't buy a hunk of junk. We didn't buy a hunk of junk. Well, we did. We did. We, we did. did. But to be fair, the money that we spent on it, we knew we wanted to get something that had a decent fiberglass frame. And the fact that that is paying off is huge. Massive, 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 massive. Oh. So we received some good news and decided that the build was indeed worth continuing on. Now we did have a bunch of footage of us gutting the rest of the trailer, but somehow in the mess of it all, it got lost. So instead, we're just gonna give you a reveal of what it currently looks like right now. Okay, here we are in the freshly gutted trailer. <laughs> oh my God. So we've done two dump runs to get rid of all of this stuff and swept it out nice so that we have a bit of a clean slate here. There is a lot more to do, but first priority is supporting this roof. As you can see right now, we're just using this kind of improvised pole to keep everything up because this ceiling is so soft. Like, I don't know how well you can see that on camera right now, but it's amazingly soft up here. Look at it move around the vent. Like, that's crazy. But you know that your boy has got the hookups on Facebook Marketplace, so uh, let's see what we bought this time. I think these are called like quick support rods or something. Oh, these things are, uh, these things are actually really cool. Look, you can like you flip them out and then you can just adjust them to whatever height you want and then it just stays there. Super simple, but it works really well. Okay, well this is, this is looking way better. I, I, I now feel a lot more confident now that we have these set up. So I got all of these for $120 and they're over $50 brand new each if you go to somewhere like Canadian Tire. We are gonna need these really, really badly when we are supporting this roof, which is going to be our first really, really technical build part of this series. And I guess the first feels intense to be taking on like arguably one of the biggest parts of this project at the very beginning. And at this point, we had our first real rain of the season and we had a vintage trailer in the driveway filled with holes. So this is probably our first real rain in, God, 10 weeks. And uh, so far, this is leaking in one spot, which is not entirely surprising, but I really kind of hoped that it would have been able to uh, not need patching right off the bat, but I think given that there are some wear points on this tarp, we're gonna have to reinforce it with something. 
question. All right, so today we are putting away the trailer in its home, the shelter, which we have reinforced with some tarps. This is the, th this thing better fit. It will fit, but it better be easy to fit. So we'll see how this goes. It need to be a little bit more this way, but not much. Can you just point this at whatever's happening? Point this at whatever's happening. Yeah, there you go. Now you gotta start going back. Let this guy go by and then we'll start it again. Whoop. Whoop. So this is looking very tight, isn't it? Holy cow. Yeesh. Way better than touch parking. I think we should take this off because if this hooks on something. Yeah, it's... we're, yeah, we're, yeah. Right. Oh my God. Anybody, do, a, do a walk around, yeah, a right to the back and look, and then what yeah. you can do, <coughs> you can pull up straight, move it over just a couple inches, and then you're back into it. Wow. Yeah, you might, yeah, you might be better off being tighter on this side, and then you can get the door. I, It's literally touching the bar up on this corner. Yeah. Holy crap. Wow, that's, uh, that is, that's tight, man. As you can see, there is definitely some uh, compromising of the tarp on the back here and kind of up in the middle, but where we have done the double layer, I think, I think it's gonna be pretty good. So I don't know if you can tell here, but right up in the corners there, I've put two pieces of insulation that was sort of scrapped from the teardown just to, to, to cover the metal pole so that in the event of, you know, a windstorm and this is like moving back and forth, those metal poles aren't bashing the side of the trailer. As you saw from when we pulled this thing in, we are so close on space. It is crazy. So the day that Levi backed the trailer into the shelter was the day before we had Frankie. So literally cutting it down to the wire, things that had to get done, before we became parents. And one of the most stressful things at this point was just trying to plan and prepare all the things that needed to be done after we figured out what this was going to be like. So I went to my local, uh, you know, plastics shop and bought a whole bunch of equipment to do my own fiberglassing. Now I gotta be honest, this is my first time buying marine grade polyester resin. Now here's the thing, all of this was going on, like all this research into the fiberglass and the roof and like figuring out whether or not this was like gonna be a project that we could actually manage was happening in the three days before Frankie was born. Like it was over the weekend, right before we got induced and I was at a level of stress that I really hadn't felt yet. Um, on this project, to be honest. Because here's the thing, I told the guy at the fiberglass store, I was like, this is my vision. I'm gonna take plywood, I'm gonna rip it into ribs, and I'm gonna adhesive glue it onto the ceiling inside the trailer and then fiberglass around it. Does that, does that make sense? Does that sound like something that I could feasibly do? And he said, oh, you can definitely do it, but I wouldn't. It turns out that, you know, the whole process of taking, you know, this resin, mixing it with the catalyst and, you know, getting this unique little combination of chemicals to work in a outdoor environment is already pretty complicated. And then doing it above me on a ceiling for the first time ever, it, it was just super daunting. And then my parents called and they said, hey, we think we, figured out a way that you could do the ribs without having to fiberglass them. And that was huge. That was, that was like a huge weight off of my shoulders. So mom and dad came down, they had some boards kind of drafted up and we, you know, took a look inside the trailer and figured out a few ways that this could probably work. And right now they are currently drafting up some ribs that they are going to build, bring down here so that we can install them when they are visiting next time they're here. A huge weight off of my shoulders having to like design a pretty seriously technical part of this build and a very important one that like we kind of can't mess up, but there's still so many parts of this trailer that need work. 
So now that we have the baby, we have the plans for the trailer, let's walk you through what the next steps are gonna look like. Come on, Frankie. Let's go, buddy. All right, so um, I was the resident artist and creator of our plans because... I'm terrible at drawing. <laughs> Honestly, no, I'm, I'm awful at it. <laughs> I am not good at drawing either, but uh, I am better at drawing than I am at using some piece of blueprint software that I've never <laughs> used before. So I spent uh, an embarrassing amount of time trying to draw up these plans for our trailer. Um, They're really, really, I, I was gonna say cute, but that sounds condescending. I don't mean it like that. They're, they are very cute, and, but also good. They're good. Good save. <laughs> You are cute. <laughs> so one of the biggest issues with the trailer, the way that it was set up before, is that I didn't fit in the bed. Um, <laughs> I'm six feet tall and the bench seat where the bed pulled out before was like six foot two or three. So it just kind of barely worked as a bed for me. Yeah, like you have slept on there and like kind of got a good sleep, but if this is gonna be like a long-term travel trailer for us, you should be able to sleep. Comfortably. Yeah. So the only digital thing that I do have is um, a blueprint that I badly made on Photoshop. I think it's actually pretty good. It's not bad. I, I, it's great. It's, a, it's some gray boxes, but it'll do. The basic idea is to keep things as similar as it was to the original design, except this time we're gonna be putting the bed at the front of the trailer and we're going to be turning that bench seat area into like a little dining zone. This way I have more bed space um, and we don't have to mess around too much with like drilling new holes in the fiberglass and adjusting things a whole lot. I will also say in terms of the bed, I think it makes sense for us to have more space for that because now it's not gonna be two of us in there, it's gonna be three of us. So yeah, yeah more space for the bed, better. So inside the trailer, we are going to have a fridge of some description, hopefully stand up because we've learned that we don't like chest style fridges because everything gets piled on top of each other. We're gonna have a deep inset sink, an induction cooktop and a little pantry area. So the only real difference in this area that we're going to have is one less enclosed space where there was like closet, I guess, where things could have been placed, but we're gonna open that up as much as possible just to keep it as light and as breezy in there as possible. And the only enclosed area is going to be where we are going to put our toilet. We still don't know what kind of toilet we are going to get. Compostable, not plumbed uh, is probably our plan uh, because we, we don't want to have to do the extra plumbing to figure out a black water tank and all that sort of stuff. Plus, when you're looking at a trailer build, not that we've ever done this before, but you're always thinking about the weight of it. Like, how mm. much can we tow? And if we want to do off-grid stuff, I'd rather have more fresh water and then a gray water tank than have a compostable toilet. Because a black water tank, like, it's a whole other kettle of fish. And I <laughs> hate emptying the black water. It's disgusting. So leaving digital land and heading into our uh, cool art drawings, um, <laughs> this is a rough idea of what it's gonna look like. And I think it's gonna be really cozy. Looking towards the front of the trailer, we're really gonna try and emphasize that front window because the way that it was before, there was a bunch of cabinetry that was really low down and the window was just kind of obscured. Uh, so we're gonna try and keep everything as high and out of the way as possible so that we can enjoy all the light that's coming in here. Looking towards the back, obviously this is gonna change a little bit because uh, when I drew this, I thought we were gonna put a dinette with like a table in the middle and two seats facing the table, but now we're gonna kind of do more of a bench seat with like a table that swings out of some sort. But I really like the idea of having this wall onto the bathroom with kind of like a vent opening area above it so that we have airflow to that vent that is at the back corner of the trailer. What I love in this picture that Levi's done as well, especially with this little fruit bowl and these shelves is instead of having that closed off kind of pantry closet thing, we have these open shelves so we can put like our spices or mugs or things like yeah. that. Uh, I think it's gonna look really nice. And like how many things realistically or do we need to like 
hang up. Yeah. We're going to be living in a trailer. I'm not going to have my like fancy dress. dress. And... Exactly. Like there ain't going to be any fancy thing. The things we do need to hang up will be towels. So. And we have towels. If you look at our side view towards <laughs> the kitchen space, um, on the wall that is the front of the bathroom, we're going to have a couple of hangers of some sort, I'm imagining. And you can kind of get a layout of how this is going to look. Um, and, and I think it's gonna be really functional. I think it's gonna be a super nice space and who knows how accurate this will be when it actually comes down to it, but this was a very valuable process for us in envisioning how this whole thing is going to be laid out. One of the things that we really liked about this trailer when we first bought it was the layout itself. Yeah. We looked at a ton of trailers, a ton of different layouts. We wanted a bathroom and we wanted to have as much counter space as possible, so we're kind of going with the design that was already in there and then just kind of elevating it, making it a bit more useful, a bit more modern, a bit more chic, a bit more <laughs> adorable. Uh, Did we have to rip out everything to do that? Um, sadly, yes. Yeah, yeah, no. But, we, uh, did we want to do that? No. No, especially being eight months pregnant was not my plan. But we did it. <laughs> So hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea for our vision and how this is all going to move forward. Um, we have so much work to do, but thankfully we have um, a community of people around us, including my parents, who are going to be helping us get this thing off the ground and make this whole dream a reality. So if you are excited and looking forward to how this all goes down or not, make sure that you're subscribed and uh, you'll see us ever here. And, here. and you'll see us every week here on YouTube. <laughs> he passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the plans for the trailer? Breathe heavily for yes. You go, oh, isn't that cute? Isn't that good? Isn't that good? It looks like... Uh, well, you sent us those pictures. Looks like Miss Frizzle. I have them all on this <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited for the build or are you nervous? <laughs> that's that's no that that uh, what is what do they the politicians say? No comment. Yeah. Yeah. No comment. <laughs>